Let's take a look at one of the many touch switch controllers on eBay. And to be honest, I don't really recommend buying them from eBay because, it, well, there are no standards on eBay. You get random stuff. But the idea is, with this controller, you've got four wires. You've got the brown live wire, you've got the blue neutral wire, which is common with the lights, and you've got the red switched wire that goes out to the lights, and you've got this black wire that comes out. The colours may be different. This is one of these things that I... You know, I've told you the colours on this one. But don't uh, just assume they're going to be the same with other controllers. Who knows the colour codes in some of them. But this one with the ring crimp in it is the touch sensor. And it's labelled on the back, just it's shown, connected to a ring crimp. That There's actually, they've not marked live neutral or anything in this. However, I've rigged this up to show you it operating to some Christmas lights. Tungsten Christmas lights, because... They just seem an appropriate load, and this is better for tungsten loads. It is usable with LED lights, but uh, it is really just probably better suited with phase angle dimming, which it does, to tungsten. Noting that there's no interference suppression. So here's a little ring crimp, and I've just touched the wire and it triggered it. So when you touch it, it comes on the low setting. Touch it again, medium setting. Touch it, oh, <laughs> that's wrong. Uh, low, medium high, off, low, medium, high. I'm not sure that is full brightness, but that is probably part of, uh, that's configurable in the circuitry, so to speak. This is hackable in a way, and you can make it safer by putting a big resistor. Oh, look, it even responds to just touching that. That's very sensitive, isn't it? Just touching the insulation. But you could put a resistor in line with this if you wanted extra safety. This requires the use of a either a metal touchpad or a metal case light fitting uh, that isn't grounded. It, it can't be grounded. It needs to use it as the antenna to pick the signal up. So looking inside this little box, spudja, it is clipped together by two clips, one on either side, one of which I've already broken off because the first thing I did when I got this was I looked at it to see does it have any proper electrical separation? Uh, the unit is unplugged. I feel the need to point that out. So I can show you this. It's got surface mount in the back. It's got some uh, physical components in the front. One moment, please. I'm just going to get the, uh, this photographed and then we can continue. The reverse engineering is complete. Let's zoom down a little bit in this and take a look at the circuitry. So this is the through-hole side of the circuit board. I've flipped the image so that it correlates to what's down below. So this resistor here is part of the power supply. Blue, grey, orange, 683, 68,000 ohms. That goes to a diode for half-wave rectification and then to this smoothing capacitor, which is about 47 megfarad uh, at 16 volt. And there's also a Zener or Zener diode on the other side of the circuit board that caps the voltage to around about 6.8 volts. There is a track here and a space for a bigger track, noting that this circuit uh, provides quite low uh, gate current just to keep the circuitry simple and the power supply simple, and it's only in pulses, so you'd have to use a very sensitive track, but there is the option there to upgrade it if desired. This capacitor here is part of a uh, filter circuit for the touch input and this capacitor here is between you and the mains it's supposed to be two capacitors but it is one and it is a 3kv um, 470 picofarad capacitor so i'll let you take a picture of that if you want to play along here and then i shall show you the other side of the circuit board things worth mentioning in the earlier part of the video i said it has to be used on the sort of Ungrounded metal frame of a light, don't remove the ground if there's one on it. If that's the case, uh, it's kind of designed for double insulated lights with a metal housing. If that's not the case, then you can theoretically put a rubber grommet and add, add a little touch pad onto the front of it using this circuit, even if the case is grounded and just touch that pad instead. On the other side of the circuit board, we have the rest of the power supply circuitry. So here's that resistor on the other side through the diode to the smoothing capacitor. Um, and there's this Zener or Zener diode across that. And that provides power to the chip. It's very low current. It's interesting to note that that uh, case 
is labelled 110 to 240 volt. They've gone for a universal approach here and they've compromised with some component values to try and fit that in. This resistor is possibly dissipating a little bit more power, but having said that, it's a 1 watt resistor look of it and it's only dissipating about 0.4 watts. Um, things worthy of note in here. Um, the filter circuit is based around these capacitors. I'll show you that in the schematic. There's the triac drive circuitry, which is a very interesting because it has a capacitor in series with the gate. Um, it has this resistor to set the clock frequency. That is something you could play with if you wanted. It will vary the sort of ratio of brightness and the multiple settings. Uh, and this resistor isn't really worth changing. This is the one that's used to get the reference so it knows where the start of the sine wave is. Let me bring in the schematic. Here is the schematic. I shall zoom down just a tiny bit more just to make that nice and big. So here's the power supply. Note that live is labelled zero volts here. That's because all the circuitry is referenced to live. That's for two reasons. It is uh, switching the light to live via the triac, but also because it's relying on when you touch the pad, it's looking for leakage from the main side, which the circuit is referenced to, to ground via the capacitor and you touching it, which provides the link. Um, it needs to have its zero volt reference to live. Uh, if you have one of these and it's not working very well, check that the polarity of your wiring is correct and that uh, the live is definitely live because otherwise it may not work. So the power supply is that resistor, that diode, charging that capacitor with the Zener diode or Zener diode across it if you prefer to shunt the uh, voltage level to about 6.8 volts. I measured 7 volts. The touch input has the pad. It's got the 470 picofarad. The data sheet shows two uh, 1000 picofarad or 1 nanofarad capacitors in series at rated 1 kilovolts each. They've used uh, the equivalent capacitance value but with a single 3 kilovolt capacitor. I just prefer, you know, in situations like this you're better using multiple components for extra separation. They've also got a 3k resistor. The data sheet shows a 1k there and also a diode to the positive and negative rails, possibly to allow for the touching of that with a static discharge and the diodes would help divert it while that limited the current. In the case of the chip itself, it may have the diodes inside and maybe that's why they used a higher value there. Um, the triac is driven via this 47 nanofarad capacitor, a 470 ohm resistor. Is that 470 ohm? Let me just grab that. Yes, it is. I've double checked. 471, 470, 4710. And the triac, which is a Mac 97A6, uh, has a 10k resistor pulling it to the zero volt rail live to keep it turned off uh, and when this circuit uh, sends a positive going pulse to that track this capacitor limits how much current can flow so it's just a single pulse is used to trigger that track it doesn't need a continuous drive all it needs is a pulse to turn it on and it will latch on i'll show you the sine wave data afterwards so the chip knows where to get its timing from in the sine wave it has a resistor i value 1.5 mega ohm Two resistors would have been nicer in series just to the voltage rating, but it's connected to neutral so it can tell when the uh, sine wave has gone past the zero crossing point. That's when it changes polarity and is effectively at the start of each half. There's a resistor here which is not the value shown on the data sheet. It's much higher. This controls the oscillator speed inside for the timing from the point it detects the zero crossing point to the point it triggers the triac in the sine wave. That could be experimented with. You could use a base value of resistor and a potentiometer on that to tweak it, and that will vary the intensities associated with each sort of level. Um, as it is the circuitry, it, I don't think it has. A, I don't think it covers the full sine wave. It's the lamp is never really going to reach full intensity. I don't think. Not sure about that. Um, or they might have just scaled it up into the sine wave to make it so that it doesn't go too dim. That's possible as well. Uh, but that's good if it doesn't trigger too early in the sine wave because uh, that results in uh, longer lamp life. This little pair of components here is a capacitor and a discharge resistor across it, presumably. That looks as though it's associated with the touch input and it may be to uh, add a slight time delay so that it's less prone to glitches and spikes that could false trigger it and it requires a decisive touch. 
What else? Oh, there is no suppression circuitry. There's no inductor. The radio hams are not going to be too pleased about that because this means that this thing will cause electrical noise on the AM audio spectrum, radio spectrum. Anything else here? That is it. You could play around with these values. You could play around with that value. Um, that's more or less it. They're the two main things you could experiment with, this capacitor value here and this... Uh, and it's associated with the resistor and this one for the timing, which will change the sort of intensities. The waveform. The zero crossing point of a sine wave is when it goes from one polarity to the other and it passes the zero volt line. Two things happen there. If the track was on, it will turn off because there's no current flowing through it and it's a latching device, so it turns off at that point, ready for triggering the next half. It also starts a timer that is based on the value of that resistor and the number of times you touched it to say, say for instance, half intensity, it will time it until it's roughly halfway along the sine wave. It will fire the track, the track will latch on and the lamp will light for that half of the sine wave. Then when it crosses over, it starts the timer again, but it then fires in the other half of the sine wave. For much lower intensity, it might actually be a much longer time delay and uh, fire at the end of the sine wave and the same again for the other half. For full intensity, it will basically fire early on. So I wonder if that resistor will really affect the, the full intensity then because I'd expect to fire almost as soon as it detected the zero crossing point a very short delay afterwards. But still probably worth experimenting with. But that is more or less it. There's another possibility here. Did you see how it triggered when I touched the wire? You could theoretically put a metal pad in the back of a plastic housing and then touch the front of it. It may actually detect the capacitance through the plastic onto your fingers. But it's interesting. The data shit... Shit? Well, that's wrong. The data sheet for the TT6061A is available online. You can find that on Google. Uh, it's an interesting circuit, but as I say, uh, use with caution of buying from from eBay. That's one where that thing I suggested there, putting a bit of foil behind the plastic case and detecting it capacitively through that would actually be maybe a safer option. It's probably worth experimenting with that. Um, another thing you could do, the black lead that goes out for the touch sensor, you could put a, a resistor, another resistor or another capacitor in series of that just to act as extra insulation between you and that. But that is it. It's an interesting little circuit and it does seem to work. So there's not much else to say about it. Uh, there are other versions. You may be able to find a version that when you touch it, it either turns straight on, straight off, or as you press the pad, it will gradually increase intensity to a fixed level, or when you touch it again, take your finger off and touch and hold it again, it reduces intensity, which is kind of more versatile. But this one, low, medium, high, is very simple. It's very straightforward. But that is it. A very simple circuit, thanks to this chip. And, well, it works. <laughs>